But believe me, Anna is asking, if you indict pain a hundred thousand million times, if you inflict wounds that cannot heal, even though the next moment you no longer know what you did, the great man suffers for your misdeeds in your place, not because these misdeeds are great, but because they are petty. I'll repeat. The great man suffers for your misdeeds in your place, not because your misdeeds are great, but because they are petty. So she says, we hear about the suffering of the common man extensively, but less of the suffering of the great man. Acharyaji, will you kindly clarify how the great man's suffering for our petty misdeeds manifests? Thank you. No, no, Anna. He does not really suffer. Look at the text you have quoted. He suffers for your misdeeds, not because the misdeeds are great, but because they are petty. Actually, they are both great and petty, your misdeeds. Great from the perspective of the little man. If you are little, then anything is relatively big for you, is it not? So even your misdeeds are very big in your own personal frame of reference. Don't you see what people do? They feel so guilty sometimes. They even commit suicide. Oh, I'm such an evil man. Oh, I'm such a sinner. It is arrogance of a kind. When you say, oh, I'm such a great sinner, you have ascribed greatness to yourself. You are so little, even your sins are bound to be little. When you say, I am a great sinner, you are overestimating yourself. You are not capable of doing anything great, even a great sin. So from the little man's perspective, the suffering that he inflicts on the great man is actually great. But from the great man's perspective, the suffering that he gets from the little man is little. It's the same thing. Are you getting it? When it's like a little one punching a seven feet fellow. Hmm? A three year old using all his heft and all his might and all the punching prowess he has to beat up a seven feet wrestler. The punches are big from the perspective of the kid. The kid is trying his best to beat up the 110 kg monster. The kid is some 10 kgs. But from the perspective of the monster, that which is being inflicted on him is little. So he can willingly take it. Even if he suffers, his suffering does not come from his personal pain. The suffering comes from a sense of failure. He wanted to teach something to the little one. The little one didn't understand. The little one didn't understand, the little one got irritated and the little one started punching the big one. Now the big one is not feeling bad because he is being punched. The big one is feeling bad because his mission has failed. He couldn't teach the little one. It's a failure. You can call it personal, you can call it impersonal. It's both and neither. Are you getting it?
That, however, does not mean that the big one does not experience any suffering. We are not talking of one kid here. We are talking of a hundred kids simultaneously beating up the wrestler. So it's a different scenario now. The big one is one. The little ones are a hundred around him. Each of them is just three-year-old, four-year-old or whatever, ten-year-old. But collectively they are something. If they can't beat him up, they can at least irritate him to death. Hmm? It is quite irritating. Have you experienced it? Three or four of these little ones pestering you. Has it happened? Hmm? Johnny, Tinky, Pinky. Three of the little devils just chasing you for something. After a point, you just blow up your head. That's the thing. And don't forget that the so-called big one can never be entirely big. As long as he maintains a body, as long as he eats, lives and breathes, a certain littleness is always going to be present as a remnant. It can never be reduced to absolutely zero. Hmm? So it does hurt him. He does suffer. Because the little ones are too many and their assault is for too long a time. But that suffering remains at the surface level. It does not go deep down. He is able to therefore withstand it. Mm-hmm.